It seems like rappers really play a character when it comes to how they act. Watch the entire video because you won't want to miss 10 rappers who switched personas. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Did you want to win any of these items on the screen? If so, be sure to watch the whole video, leave a like, and comment the hidden message. And with that being said, let's get right back into the video. 6 9 testified against his former associates, Anthony Harv Ellison and Al Jermiah Nuke Mack of the Nine Trey Bloods. Post Malone. I want to take this genre, you know, and stretch it so far that people who may not listen to it, listen to it. If you really want to look at the progression of certain rappers, then you'll see that sometimes their journey to become a rapper isn't what you think it is. Post Malone is a great example of this. His childhood wasn't anything like most rappers have. His father even got promoted to being the head of concessions to the Dallas Cowboys football team. Pretty cool, huh? So Mr. Malone, Papa Post, uh, Post Dad a lot. That's, I hear that a lot in passing. It was during this time that Post Malone went and started to learn how to play guitar inspired by Guitar Hero, obviously, and tried out for many bands, including a heavy metal one. In fact, he did many different genres of music before making his first rap hit in White Iverson, which got him attention from both heavy hitters in the rap industry and many music labels. Now, Post Malone is one of the most unique rappers presently, and his songs always get a lot of hits, and his visuals in his music videos are usually either really colorful or really impactful. For Malone, he feels that he's different than everyone else, and he doesn't believe in music like everyone else. I like everything, metal, old country, hip hop, funk, and R&B, Malone said. What I'm not into is boxes. I don't put people in boxes. There are no genres anymore. If a song makes you feel nice or it makes you feel sad or if it makes you feel anything, what does it really matter what category it is? I noted earlier that Post Malone is a bit of a journeyman when it comes to his music, and that's very true. He bounced around from genre to genre in order to find his groove, even going so far as to join a heavy metal band for a bit before venturing into rap music. He's seen a lot in his rap career has shown him that all he wants to do is make people who listen to his music happy, and that desire has led to persona shifts and genre shifts, and even in his own rap music, he's doing his own thing and trying to be unique when others are being a bit basic. Plus, you could argue that the more famous he's gotten, the more outlandish he's gotten, including covering his face with tattoos and more. Kanye West. Stuff and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself. How fact, you need to take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, man. Up. It's with great restraint that I don't put Kanye West at the top of this list. Because when you think of giant persona changes, Kanye is one who comes to mind in all the ways that matter. 4 a.m. Talking about how's it going? It's not going good. Y'all here trying to take money out to, to make money off of it. That's how it's going. And even in some of the ways that don't. At one point in time, several times if we're being honest, Kanye was the biggest rapper in the world. He had hit song after hit song. He was selling out concerts, getting awards, being a major brand, etc. But then slowly but surely his personality began to change. He got to being more erratic, more impulsive, and it showed. A classic example was during the now infamous VMA Awards where he interrupted Taylor Swift to praise Beyonce, causing quite a media backlash against him. He would bounce back with his massive hit power and seemed to be on the right track once more. But not, but not long after that, he started to get even more crazy and erratic. Kanye West has a bipolar disorder. Being bipolar is part of what makes you brilliant, part of what makes you you, and you embrace it. This mental illness is one that is well documented, including noting that the symptoms are so similar to things like depression that it's easy to misdiagnose. That it's easy to misdiagnose it, which means people like Kanye have their disorder not labeled until adulthood, which happens more than you think. But that wasn't the final nail in his persona switch coffin. Oh no, that would be when Kanye decided that he didn't need the medication to get better. He thought he could get well on his own, and he was very wrong. In the past few years, Kanye has been one of the most divisive, impulsive, and sometimes downright irritating person to be around or interact with. He claims he's fine and does things like Coachella to good, and then he'll go onto Twitter and rant about things for three hours just because he felt that Drake slighted him. Other rappers are even getting in on the action and making fun of Kanye when he can, like when Eminem noted in a track that people called him Kanye crazy. You know you've had a persona switch when people are putting labels on you to try and define what you are. And until Kanye gets his act together, he's gonna be the laughing stock of the rap industry for some time. 6 9 He wasn't looking at all the years I was looking at, but he beat his case. Like, blood, I'm trying to be out. Oh yeah, I couldn't resist doing this one because it's so funny and yet so true. I'll admit that in terms of style, 6 9 is not a rapper who has changed in persona. In fact, he went full tilt on it, for lack of a better word, in order to ensure that his fame and such. 
in order to ensure his fame and such. But the persona swap that he did came when he was but the persona swap that he did came when his butt was on the line for a lot of things, and he had to decide whether to be loyal or be free. If you know his story, you know what he did, but let's back up a little bit. At the height of his fame, 6ix9ine was known as one of the top mumble rappers in the world, and not only had the music that he was getting him attention, he was also one who had the support of a group known as the Nine Trade Bloods, and using their clout, he grew his fame. His persona though was everything for him. He wanted to try and prove that he was the toughest guy around, that he was someone you wouldn't mess with, and he was the biggest and baddest and best rapper, period. This a million dollars worth of jewelry. We walk around with a hundred packs on us. Straight blues, man, hundred packs. Even dubbing himself the king of New York and proclaiming his credibility wherever he went. But then not surprisingly, his ego got the best of him in the worst possible way. He started to lash out at the Nine Trade Bloods after they were holding him to the standards of the group and the deal they made to make him famous. He gets fame, they get his money to put it simply. He gets fame, they get his money to put it simply. But 6ix9ine didn't play ball and thus he fired the group. In Texas, I fired everybody in my team. I got no manager, I got no booking agent, no PR, no public. I don't got nobody on my team. Not long after that, the FBI came around, arrested both 6ix9ine and the Nine Trade Bloods in a mass arrest with charges of conspiracy, illegal enterprise, and more. Two of these charges had life sentences attached to them, and 6ix9ine himself was facing at least 47 years in jail. And that's where the persona switch came in, because he went from being the baddest guy around to a snitch in literally no time flat. For those who don't get the bad joke going on here, in the rap community, snitches are the worst kind of people. They betray trust in order to get personal gain or freedom and sacrifice anyone they feel is necessary to get that. 6ix9ine knew that, but the thought of being in jail the rest of his life broke him out of his rapper persona and put him into survival mode. Now I'm sure that some of you will say, but it's only right and fair to try and get out of jail, or he only did what he needed to do. And to an extent you're right, he did what many of us likely would have done if the need arose. But the problem is that we're not rappers, and we weren't part of a group via the Nine Trade Bloods. They pride loyalty and being able to rely on each other above all else. So for 6ix9ine to betray them and literally sell out the group, yeah, that was a major red flag. While 6ix9ine did try and play off what he did, the world at large knew exactly what he was, and no amount of spin was going to save him. Sure enough, he did get some time behind bars, he's still in there at the time of this video. And when he comes out, he'll try and change back into his other persona, but whether he will be allowed to actually live that way is still up for debate. Cardi B People be commenting like, oh my gosh, Cardi, why did you fix your teeth? Eh, eh, eh. In, the rap, in the world of rap, Cardi B is known as the Queen of Rap, a title that was also attached to Nicki Minaj, but that's another story entirely. Part of the reason she has gained a following as she has is because of her looks, but also the knowledge that she has worked very hard to get, but also the knowledge that she has worked very hard to get to where she is today. And she claims for a long time that on her body she hasn't done plastic surgery, but that didn't last when her own persona shifted in a way that didn't just hurt, it literally hurt her badly. To her credit for the longest time, the only work she had done to her was her smile. She had always had a crooked smile, so she paid tens of thousands of dollars to get the perfect smile. So she paid tens of thousands of dollars to get the perfect smile she always wanted. That wasn't bad, that was even fair to get done, but as in all things, it's a slippery slope. So here's the deal. Cardi B has never been shy about flaunting her body and her songs are pretty much excuses to talk about what people should do with their bodies if you get my drift. So you would understand it when I say that at the young age of 25, at the time, she wouldn't want to get a child because she would likely feel that it would ruin her career in one form or another. Lo and behold, after having a secret marriage to fellow rapper Offset, she did indeed get pregnant and while she was thrilled at the notion of being a mother, as most people are even in surprise pregnancies, she admitted that she was also very scared, mainly because she felt that if she couldn't get back into her form in regards to her pre-pregnancy body, her career would be done. At first, she was able to play it off, get back into shape, and even did a tour not long after being pregnant with her daughter Culture. But not long after she got back on tour, she apparently wasn't too satisfied with her body, to the extent that she decided to have some plastic surgery on her. Some of the surgeries that she had was liposuction and breast augmentation. What's worse, in many ways, was that not only did she have this done, she had it done and didn't wait to heal. Cardi was so set to do the 92Q Spring Bling Festival. Cardi was so set to do the 92Q Spring Bling Festival in 2019, but because of the pain she was in and the fear that she was going to undo the work she has put into her body, she had to back out of it in order to get some rest. Which is good because according to the doctors involved with her procedure, she's really over she really overdid it and she had swelling occurring in various parts of her body. 
She even posted to social media to show just how bad things had gotten for her. Sometimes the worst thing you can do is ignore what your body is going through, and that's what Cardi B did because her persona told her that she wasn't pretty enough, even though she was. Eminem. From the last time you were here on 106, tell us what comes across your mind when you see that. Kids don't do drugs. Eminem is one of the biggest legends of the rap game, and given the last two albums he's had, you might be surprised that Slim Shady has had a persona change at all during his life, but he has, multiple times in fact. Many rappers have issue with the law or themselves and their families, and their rivals, and sadly, Eminem has had many of those. He had a very messy divorce with his wife, one that left him with full custody of their daughter, which he was fine with and fully adores and supports. He's had many troubles with the law, especially over music, but worst of all, he's had substance issues that almost took his life. But what needs to be noted is that before that nearly fatal incident, Eminem was in a really bad place. He was eating a lot, he couldn't sleep much, he was having trouble staying healthy, and he was struggling to continue making his epic music. All that pressure nearly broke him. He was lucky to bounce back from it at all. But it was a really close call for a long time. Even after he recovered, he traded an addiction for substances to an addiction to exercise and being healthy, which wasn't healthy, ironically enough. All, this led, all of this led to a major persona change for Eminem in terms of his music. After his near-death experience, he decided he needed to go softer with his music, and albums like Recovery and Relapse showed a much different side of Eminem. At first, people were blown away by this version of Eminem and fully supported it. But as time went on and Eminem continued to go on this path, people got over it. And by over it, I mean hated it. And they started throwing shade at Eminem. This led to a reversion of his persona back to his Slim Shady day via Kamikaze and music to get murdered by. And the reaction from that showed this persona change was worth the wait. But no matter which persona he's in or wants to do, he's still the one and only Eminem. 21 Savage artist who was born in England was arrested by immigration authorities for overstaying his visa held for nine days, forcing him to miss his performance at the Grammys. 21 Savage has had a lot of persona changes if you know where to look. One of the biggest ones though came in regards to where he was born. Just about everyone who knew him felt he was from Georgia, when actually he was from the United Kingdom, which for the record is a pretty big difference, especially when it comes to immigration. According to sources, his mother took him to the United States when he was seven. She had a work visa and he got a visa too, because of his mother's status, as that's how the law works in this case. However, her work visa eventually ran out, and when she was supposed to leave, she didn't, and naturally, 21 Savage didn't either. And while it took a while to figure out, they realized that he was still in the country as an illegal immigrant, so they promptly arrested him. The whole situation was put under a microscope because of the various elements that went into the case. It's true that 21 Savage said he was from Atlanta, Georgia, when he wasn't, but he was trying to stay in the US legally but ICE was treating him like a hard criminal when he clearly wasn't. Eventually, the rap community and more rallied around him and got him set free, which allowed him to remain in the US. Needless to say, he likely won't be lying about his origins from now on, so that's one persona he can drop. Another one has to deal with his personality. Before his rise to fame, 21 Savage was unapologetic, a jerk online, including trying to woo ladies who were already taken, and more. But as he started to get famous, he realized that he needed to be more than just another rapper, so he decided to look towards philanthropy, and this was good for him long term, because that act, and the acts that followed, helped him be so beloved by the community, helped him be so beloved by the community in Georgia, that they fought for him during his scare with ICE. Snoop Dogg I bet you'd be surprised to hear that once upon a time, Snoop Dogg wasn't the lovable, grass-inhaling guy we all know and love. During the beginning of his career, he was a feared man, and I mean feared. He wasn't just a major star of Death Row Records and the man behind their rise to fame, which would eventually lead them to getting Tupac Shakur, but he was also a part of many infamous groups that led to him being arrested multiple times, including skating some very serious charges. If he kept on the path he was on, he would have been in serious trouble or might have even gotten his life taken. However, in his rise in fame, the music gave him a new perspective and a new persona. Gone was the most feared man in rap, and in was the chill brother that just wanted to smoke, so to speak, and wanted to have fun. This more humble and hilarious Snoop led to him getting all sorts of endorsements, including getting TV deals, commercials, being in many movies, and more. Heck, he even got to be a part of the WWE in a way that led to him being in the celebrity wing of their Hall of Fame. So sometimes to make it big and get all the green, you need to swap personalities. And there you have it, a look at the various rappers in the world today and in the past who have changed their personas for one reason or another. Can you believe the various differences that these persona changes had on the rappers themselves?
Which do you believe is the most dramatic of the set? Which persona do you think did the rapper some good? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe. I'm Keith Trending, and I'll see you next time. A simple reminder on how to enter our brand new giveaway. We will be giving away either an iPhone X Max, the new iPad mini, or a MacBook Pro. It's really your choice. So be sure to leave a like, comment the keyword, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. It's really that simple. Go for it.